it's time to review the WEN model 3420T 8 by 12 wood lathe. <laughs> it's been 12 episodes now, this being the 13th. Ooh, scary. I think it's only fitting that we uh, review not the projects so much as much as and my skills going from my first turn to my last turn but rather the lathe itself and how it's performed uh, we'll go over the negatives and we'll finish on a positive note the first thing that comes to mind when I first got this was the tie downs the lack of being able to secure it to the table was an issue but that was not the biggest issue that I came across the biggest issue with this lathe is the tool rest. As it stands right out of the box, it is currently level with the center of whatever work you're working on. The tool rest itself is already centered. So to try to get your tool down lower so that the point of the tool is directly centered with the tool, with your product, the wood, when you're doing a bowl, when you're trying to get that tool directly center and level, you can't do it. You're gonna to have to tip it down because it's too high. That is huge. So you you think to yourself, we'll get a replacement tool rest, one that doesn't have a, a high shoulder on it. The problem is the the receptacle is 12 millimeters. Most tool rests come at a half inch, which is 0.5 inches. <laughs> Maths, go figure. 12 millimeter is 0.4785, I believe. So it's smaller, which means you're gonna have to take your half inch tool rest and find a way to reduce it in size. Now, I did manage to get a piece of steel threaded and some half inch all thread that I managed to get down to roughly 12 millimeters. It's probably a little less. It doesn't matter. It fits in nice. I used a file to do it and I used it on a lathe. In fact, we'll link the, uh, in the description the previous video or maybe over here be a little link to that video. So we've got a problem with the tool rest being 12 millimeter and not centered, but additionally, and I'll use this as an example, the one small one that I didn't use, is that the paint that is on the tool rest itself prevents the tool from just sliding across it gently. It tends to want to stick to the paint for some reason, so I suggest taking a file to it and filing it off if you're going to use use this particular lathe. In addition to, to the fact that the paint's on here, it's also a very soft metal. And certain tools with sharp edges are going to get caught in the soft metal. That's why, again, this is a harder steel and the tools won't catch on it as easily. So that's the tool rest. The second thing which I talked about already is the, the ability to anchor it to the table, whether it's through rubber grommets, a rubber mat, or putting up some furring strips just to keep it from walking because there's no way to secure it on its, on its current legs. The, uh, I don't know how accurate it is, but the manual states that they suggest not putting anything on the lathe over five inches, which doesn't make sense to me since this is an eight by 12, but you're limiting me to five inches, then why wouldn't it be a five by 12? Uh, any person who buys this is gonna to wanna to maximize it by putting eight inches on here and throwing a 12 piece of, you know, a 12 inch log, eight inches wide and trying to turn it. It's just gonna happen. I don't know how successful it's gonna be and I'll let you know in future episodes, but as of right now, they suggest five inches being the max. Now I've pushed that beyond that. This is I think seven and a half inches and it worked fine. And the last thing I wanna say is the ability to disconnect uh, our chuck you have on here. The holes are already starting to get warped and the tool is already, I've already had to fix it a couple times already. 
So I might have to get a new piece of steel. Might have to drill these out or I might just flatten off two sides so I can get a wrench in here to tighten up the, uh, the chuck. So that's a, another bad thing. I'm not sure if I can get a, a, I'll probably flatten it off to be honest with you. Probably be the easiest thing to do. So those are all the negatives associated with it. Some of the positives that come from this lathe is that it is affordable. It's affordable. It's a 110 outlet, a standard outlet. You can take it in your house, plug it in, and let it rip. You're ready to turn. The variable speed, fantastic. So the end result, would I recommend it? No. While I continue to use it, yes. So overall, thank you for watching and giving me a turn on your screen, and we'll see you next week. It's first, ooh, we're missing a piece. The very first piece we turned, a little sample piece. Hello. Hi, I was wondering where mom and everyone went. Paint on it. Email. I should put my phone on silent.